Google Classroom add-ons are now a thing. And if you've been itching to get your hands on them and to get you started, this is for you. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to use Google Classroom add-ons, and we're going to use Adobe Express as our example of the add-on that we're going to take a look at. My name is Matt Miller. I'm the author of Ditch That Textbook. And in this video, I'm going to be walking you through the whole process, including what it looks like from the teacher side, what it looks like from the student side, and then what you can do with some of these add-ons. So let's start right at the top here. What do I need to know about Google Classroom add-ons in the first place? Like, is this an important thing? Is this something that I can't live without? There's a couple of things to know right from the top. Number one, add-ons were created just to make things smoother and faster. So um, lots of these third-party tools, some of these uh, you know, web apps and web tools that you've been using with your students for a long time, you've probably been using those with Google Classroom as it is. And that part doesn't really change. Um, what changes here with add-ons is that it builds those tools, or at least access to those tools, into the assignments. So now you're going to be able to assign, you know, tools from lots of these add-ons, including Adobe Express, which we're going to use as our example in this video. You can do that right inside of Google Classroom without having to leave. Number two, not everyone has access to add-ons. This isn't for everybody. And if your school has the free Google Classroom, there's a good chance that you probably don't have add-ons. The only schools and school districts that have access to this are the Google for Workspace Education Plus. So if your school has that, or number two, if they have purchased the teaching and learning upgrade and they've assigned it to all of the teachers that are going to use add-ons. So for you to be able to use add-ons, you got to have this. The bummer about that is that with, if individual teachers want to have add-ons and they don't have access to this, you can't just go out and like plunk down the money for it or do it individually. This has to be done at the school district level. So that's kind of sad news if you have uh, the free version of Google Classroom or if you don't have either one of these two things. But the good news is that if you do have the free version or if you don't have access to add-ons, you can still assign to Google Classroom in the same old ways that you always have. If you're looking for one of those assigned to Google Classroom buttons, you can always still use that. You can still copy and paste links right out of your favorite web tools and web apps and stick them straight into um, Google Classroom. You can still use all of those cool core Google tools like Docs and Slides and Sheets and everything. So that all doesn't really change. But if you do have access to the add-ons and you want to see what it looks like, that's really what we're going to be diving into to today. And like I said earlier, we're going to be using Adobe Express as our example. So I'm going to show you how all these add-ons work, and we're going to use Adobe Express as an example. And I wanted to show you just real quick why I really like it. Um, first of all, Adobe Express, if you're not familiar, is this really great... Um, suite of creativity tools that let your students create images, they can create videos, they can create web pages. There's a ton of um, stock photos that students can pull in. There are thousands of pre made templates so that you and your students don't have to start from scratch. You can start from one of those templates and just jump right in. And so, one of the reasons I like Adobe Express and the way that it works together with Google Classroom is that it's an industry standard creativity suite. If your students want to get into any sort of creative work beyond school or even during school, you know, as like a side hustle or something, Adobe Express is the kind of tool that they would probably be using out there. In fact, there are all sorts of creativity tools within the creative cloud of Adobe that students might do in, or might use in professional creative work. So this is really getting them hands on with some of the stuff that people use out in the real world. Number two, it puts tons of creative assets in students' hands. I mentioned those stock photos earlier, and that is huge just in and of itself. There are all of these premium, beautiful stock photos that students can pull into their slides, into their images, into their videos, into their web pages, whatever it is that they're making. They can use those stock photos as long as you've had your school district install um, Adobe Express for all of your students. And we're going to get to that in just a second. But um, of course, the great part, no, I'm going to get to that in a second. That's number four. Um, so I love that there are all of these assets that are already in there, all of these things that they can pull into their projects and use so that they don't have to go, you know, like 
jump off to a Google search and start looking for images and stuff out there. And they don't know if they have, you know, the license or the freedom to use that stuff. So this is really nice. Number three, it works seamlessly with Google Drive, with Chromebooks, and with other devices. Adobe Express, um, when you connect your Google account to it, you can pull in images from your Google Photos. You can pull in files from your Google Drive. It works on the web, so it works great with Chromebooks. You can do everything that you want to do with um, Adobe Express right there on Chromebooks. And then you also have access to it on other devices, too. It's got some great mobile apps, and so if students want to work on their cell phone um, or a tablet or something, they can run it off of that. And then here's number four that I started to get to earlier, but I was going to hold it off until number four. It's all free. That's one of the great things about this is that, um, you know, Adobe Express is free for K-12 education. And really all you've got to do to get access to it is you have to have your, you know, school district IT admin set up Adobe Express all the way across the board for all of your students. Whether you have this Google Classroom add-on or not, you have the ability to get Adobe Express for free and to get access to all of these great tools. So that's why I like it as an add-on. Now, if you're going to add on some of these add-ons, and this definitely goes for Adobe Express, but it also goes for lots of other add-ons. Sometimes you have to do some stuff behind the scenes to make sure that everybody has access to it. And that's definitely the case here for um, Adobe Express. If you want to activate that Google Classroom add-on for Adobe Express, then what you're going to do is you're going to have your school district admin set this up for everybody across the board. Now, if you're a teacher and you're looking at this and you're like, oh, no, I don't know what to tell them. Guess what? There's a really great guide that's available. There's a link down in the description that you can use if you want to. If you were a school district IT admin and you're freaking out, and you're going, oh no, I don't know what to do. Guess what? Here's the guide. Again, link down in the description and you can go figure out what steps you need to take. Really, all you have to do is just kind of walk your way down through this and you're in good shape. Did I mention that it's free? Okay, so once that's all activated, that's kind of like the the boilerplate stuff that needs to be done at the school district level to make sure that these Google Classroom add-ons are ready. So how do we create assignments? Once all of that, like all of that big infrastructure stuff is set up with your IT admin, what does it look like for us as teachers? That's what we're going to get to now. So let's go ahead and take a look at how you create an assignment using a Google Classroom add-on and more specifically using Adobe Express. So here's my Google Classroom and I can go right into my classwork page just like regular and I can go create a brand new assignment. And of course, if you want, you can add a title. Um, we're going to be doing the vampires versus zombies in diagram activity. Here's where your instructions go. Of course, it's important to add in your instructions so that students know exactly what they need to do. And then once your add-ons are set up, this is where they're going to show up. And so all I have to do really to add anything Adobe Express related is just click on this add-ons button. And then it's going to open up a little screen where it's going to check my login and make sure that I'm all logged in and ready to go. Now, it will default to loading up the projects that you've created. If you want to make a template yourself that you want to push out to your students, like for me, I made this little simple um, zombies versus vampires um, template. I can just pull that right out of my projects that I've created but I don't have to use those projects because I can hit the plus button here and I can go search through some of the templates that are available out here for um, Adobe Express. So I can you know, pull those in right out of the add-on as well. But for me in this activity, I wanna use my Venn diagram that I created where we're gonna compare zombies versus vampires. If I was setting this up as a teacher, I would wipe all of this text out or put some dummy text in here so that students have to fill it in. So once I decide that that's the file I wanna use, I wanna hit attach, and then I decide, do I want students just to be able to view my file or do I wanna make a copy? This is like the digital photocopier. Do I wanna make a copy 
for each student for them to fill in. And of course, for me, I want to make a copy so that each student can, you know, do their own work. If you were making a master file for students to see like a classroom management plan or a set of instructions or an example, that's where you would pick view instead. So once I check all this out, everything's good to go. I've chosen my classes, my students, how many points, if I've added a rubric, if I want to, I'm going to hit assign. And then now that's assigned out to all of my students. And so once the students get it, then it's into their hands. So that's what we're going to switch to next is to see what does it look like for students to um, view the assignment, to be able to complete the assignment, so on and so forth. So I'm going to open up my class. Now I'm looking at this as a student. I'm going to open up this new assignment and look. I notice that it's worth 100 points. And then here is that assignment that's done through um, Adobe Express. And so all I have to do to pull that up is I just click on that file. It's going to make that copy just like it said that it was going to. It's going to make that copy so that I can fill in my own text. And I take a look at it and I go, okay, this is what it looks like. I'm going to make a copy. I'm going to click that button. And so now it's going to take my template that I as the teacher created in Adobe Express. And then it's going to make that individual copy, like I said, kind of like the digital photocopier for the students so that they can fill in their own stuff. Now, of course, this copy will live in the student's Adobe Express um, account. So they're always able to go back and take a look at it again. So here's my copy right here. <laughs> we'll notice that my um, little zombie and vampire emojis didn't come over, but I can change that if I want to. And so if I'm the student, I'm going to come in here to the text. I'm going to edit the text up here. Um, like I said earlier, I would have put some dummy text or some um, you know, or left blank uh, text boxes here. Uh, but as the student, I'm going to fill in all of that stuff. Of course, there's all of these buttons over here where I can add photos, text, shapes, any sort of design assets, backgrounds, just all sorts of things to this if I want to. And then whenever I'm done, this is an important part. Whenever I'm done as the student, I want to click on this share button and send it back to Google Classroom. Now, sometimes, you know, you might think that if I, if I created it and it's done, then it's just ready and available to my teacher. But the truth is, is that I have to take this file that I'm working on and I have to send it back to Google Classroom to be able to attach it to that Google Classroom assignment to be able to send it back to my teacher. So all the Adobe Express is really doing here is it's just finalizing this file. And then it's taking that finalized file, which is going to be you know, pretty much an image that the teacher is going to be able to see. And then it's going to send it back to Google Classroom. So like it says here, sent to Google Classroom, please return to Google Classroom to finish attaching this project to your assignment. Okay, so I'm done here. I come back here to Google Classroom. I'm going to go back. And then so now I have sent this back to my teacher. And all I'm going to do is just hit the turn in button. And now I'm going to hit turn in. And now that goes back to the teacher. And for me as the student, my work is done. If I've made a mistake, of course, I can hit that unsubmit button and it will go back. So now that the student has turned this in, let's switch this to the grading part. How am I going to grade this with a Google Classroom add-on, and specifically with the Adobe Express uh, Google Classroom add-on? So here I am as the student or as the teacher. I can either go into classwork or I can go into grades, either way. And so now I've got this activity where I've got something turned in. Here it is right here. And I can see that I need to grade this. So I'm going to click on the assignment. And then I notice that here I have one assignment that's turned in. And then there's what it looks like. So, of course, all I've got to do here is just click on that little icon. Now, what's nice about this is that this is going to seem very familiar to you if you've done any sort of grading inside of Google Classroom. And if you're watching this video, I bet you probably have. You'll see that this same frame that's around the student work looks just like it does if it was a document or a slide or something like that. I can take a look at my student work. I can assign it a grade if I want to. And I can even add private comments. It'll go specifically to the student. I hit post.
to post the comment. I hit return to return that work with the grade on it. And now I'm set. And of course, I can also use my comment bank if I want to. Um, and then if I have multiple uh, student files, I can advance through them with these little arrows up here, just like I could if it was a document or whatever. And of course, whenever that's done, what I can do is as the student, you know, I can go right back into my classwork and I can take a look at it and I can see that it has been graded. I can go to view assignment and I can see what my grade was and I can see what my comment was and I can even go back my teacher because you know teachers like to get happy little comments with smiley faces on them and all of that so so that's kind of a nice thing um related to using these um, add-ons with google classroom is that all of this stuff really does just look the same that it does with um, docs and slides and all of that um, all of those native google tools only now we've got more third-party apps like adobe express that are in there so after having watched this and seen some of the things that you can do with Adobe Express, the question might be, what could I, I mean, it's free, right? And it's beautiful and it's easy to use. What kind of stuff could I do with Adobe Express? And so if that's the question that you have, I wanted to share with you some creative assignment ideas that you can use with Adobe Express. What I love about Adobe Express is that it does have thousands and thousands of these templates that are out there where you can grab one, you can remix it and adjust it however you need to, and then you can go assign it out to your students. And so these are some of my favorite ones. Uh, for instance, there's an all about me graphic uh, that you can use to, of course, have students introduce themselves. But what if they did those questions for a character or a historic figure that you've been studying? You know, based on what they've learned, how do they think they would respond to that? Uh, secondly, there are templates for invitations. What if it was an invitation for an event in history? Um, you can do uh, top three, top five, top 10 lists with justification. There are album covers. I mean, we could go on and on and on. There's some really cool stuff in here. And if you want to see this entire list and also be able to um, remix and get copies of some of these templates, you can go right here to ditchthattextbook.com slash Google dash classroom dash add dash ons. Just use that link. It's also in the description if you want to be able to um, take a look at that. But that um, all of those creative ideas are right there at that link. So hopefully that's given you some idea of how Google Classroom add-ons work, how they look from the teacher side and from the student side. If you want to go back over that or want to be able to see some of those creative ideas, I've got this entire post all about Google Classroom add-ons right down here. You can link to it in the description if you want to. So I hope that helps you. I hope that was useful. If it was, of course, don't forget to subscribe and make sure that you click that little bell so that you get notifications whenever I post new content. I'm Matt Miller from Ditch That textbook and I'll see you in the next video.